Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of the program. Uh, today we're going to talk more about, uh, see, the Iceman and a couple of new details that have come out uh, regarding his whereabouts immediately prior to when he was uh, when he died and some of the circumstances under which he died, some of the stuff that they looked at that he had on his person before he was murdered. And they know that he was murdered uh, because of a few wounds that he had that didn't have time to heal. Like he had a cut between his thumb and his uh, index finger that, that cut to the bone. And there were no signs of it healing not long after he received them. He found, or they found uh, um, an arrowhead lodged in his shoulder that was so deep that he pr most likely he must have bled out. And he would have even bled out um, under modern uh, uh, science as well, or modern medicine rather. It was that deep of a, of a cut. But he did. It seemed that he he did put up a fight. They found four people's blood on everything that he had. He had blood on his clothes, on his on um, I think his axe or one of his tools or both two of his tools, and then they found someone else's blood, like in his hair or, or not his hair, so, somewhere else. But there were like four, up to four people's uh, other people's DNA on him. Um. Anyway, we'll get more into that later. Um. I I did an op episode on Otzi bec uh, in the past. Because it seemed like he had some sort of acupuncture going on as well. His tattoos were on certain acupressure points. It seemed like, or acupuncture points rather, all over his body. It seemed like he had been practicing some self medication. He had uh, some different. He had liver warts. He had some. He had some uh, mosses. He had uh, mushrooms. He had all kinds of different types of flora that they found were located in the valley where uh below uh where he died in in the alps uh which he di he died in the otzel alps so this is a, a rough i'm trying to zoom in here this is a rough map of where he he was found right here he was there for 5300 years or something crazy like that uh they they date him around 34 to 3100 BC so so that's right between the Neolithic and and the Bronze Age some depending on who you ask they'll call it the Chalcolithic they'll call it the Copper Age um whatever it was it was the time of transition where uh, especially in this part of Europe where the the tools suddenly change right they have different types of their metallurgy seems to level up at this stage from copper to to uh, bronze and then they even found a, a bronze axe on it this is a recreation of him by the way uh, he was like in his late 40s uh, they think early 50s when he died seemed to be in pretty good shape uh, considering how well how well preserved he was he's basically the, the one of the oldest uh, European natural mummies that they've found period so he was remarkably intact. This is the actual photo from 1991 of these. Of, I think, they, the, yeah, they're the two hikers that found him. And th that's w what it looked like. He, he, he died like this. Some speculate that he was trying to pull uh, an arrow out of him or uh, he was trying to crawl to safety. Something, something was going on where he was in really bad shape and he was trying his best, whatever strength he had left to muster, to really get to safety and and perhaps heal and and come back to where he was from, and that's where that's where that brings us to um, the part of the video where it turns out that he was from Southern Tuscany, and it, they think he was from su tu Southern Tuscany because his axe, his his copper axe, they they traced the metals to Southern tu Tuscany. That doesn't necessarily mean he was from there. Um, they checked his DNA, they checked his mitochondrial, his autosomal, they checked his, um, his uh, Y chromosome DNA. And he seems to be related to, to people who are from Sardinia. Or um, I think there is, I read somewhere that there were some, ext some living, mo some modern people who shared a certain um, d almost direct DNA with him. Like he, he they might be direct ancestors or something like that he shared it with like 19 people but anyway um his his dna is from uh europe but more specifically the sardinian he's close to the sardinian people so um take that for what it's worth i don't know if he's from southern tuscany but his axe is but anyway so 
when he died, he had 75 species of mosses and liverworts. And then they can tell where he where he was going, where he came from in his path. Like I said, in that from that valley uh, below where he, he was, he, uh, he died. Um, the Iceman brought species of him, uh, some species of him, both deliberately and inadvertently. So that's pretty interesting. So his final trek to the Hyatt Mountains was from this valley. And I don't think this valley has a name. Oh, Schnallstall. Yeah, he, he, the valley is called Schnallstall in the Alps. So he was going through there. And no one knows what he was doing up there except he was killed for sure. Who knows what his beef was. They think that he probably killed people on his way out. Um, maybe he got into a scuffle and then he was just trying to run away. Maybe that's that's what it was. And whoever it was that was pursuing him, they ended up getting the job done. Um, so this guy, James Dixon, he's a retired archaeobotanist who... Um, spent most of since 1991 he spent a lot of his life trying to figure out what exactly happened and this is what he says he says um what he's like what he's done so far now is that as much proof as you're going to get with the current scientific landscape the scientific know-how that he went up Schnallstall rather than going uh, than other adjacent valleys because some people didn't think they didn't like was he coming was he going was he going down was he going up there is all kinds of speculation about where he um where he he wanted to go um some stuff that he found he was wearing clothes made from leather and hides he he had a cloak woven from grass he had daggers and arrows that were recently sharpened before recently meaning right before he died like around the time that he died he sharp, he sharpened them um he had head trauma deep cut between his thumb and forefinger arrowhead lodged in his left shoulder um, he had other people's blood on him. There, he might have had a companion because the blood on his shirt. He might have carried someone who was ble bleeding, or maybe he was grappling with someone and, and he got their blood on him. Whatever it was, um, there definitely was a struggle. Uh, there were dozens of little vials, and one of the vials looked very black, very dark brown. That was because it was absolutely stuffed with moss. So he started pulling out the moss with tweezers, and he knew what it was. It's called flat nacara or Necora. Um, it couldn't have uh, grown in the cold, so obviously he wasn't in the he wasn't living in the Alps or anything like that. Um, he brought all this stuff with him. Um, microscopic bits of the flat flat Necora were also found in the Iceman's digestive tract, which is weird because he it's not palatable. It's not, it doesn't taste good. It's not nutritious. Um, it it just it's just weird for him to have. Uh, eaten it maybe it was a superstitious thing because again he was into uh certain practices um maybe back then in his in, from his culture there was some sort of value to eating that maybe it was some sort of divine protection thing who knows um but dixon thinks he didn't mean to ingest the mosses but he wanted to carry them with him. Um, the absorbent bog moss may have been medicinal, used to staunch the blood from the Iceman's gruesome hand wound, um, which was about a day or two old when he died. So again, he got the wound, and then it just could, didn't, there was no time to heal before he just gave out. Um, the flat necra could have been used to wrap the meat from the alpine ibex, or the red deer that he that was found in Otzi's gut. That's another possibility, because they did find he, he, he recently had a meal in his stomach and maybe he did wrap it with this stuff and it just inadvertently got into his system that way um so again was he coming north was he going south um he they did know that the food that he ate was eaten at an elevation of 30 32 80 feet so a thousand meters high 36 hours before he died that is how much they know about that his body was found higher than that so he traveled about 7,000 uh, feet in elevation or 3,210 meters um, farther than the 3,280 feet where he ate. So he ate and then he just went up, up this uh, mountain. Um, perhaps he was like in a daze. He just he was wandering aimlessly maybe um, just because of blood loss and who knows. Um, it. I've heard stories of people who get 
like heat stroke in the desert and then they just start going in a circle and then they end up dying. I don't know if it's a similar effect when you're bleeding out, but either way, it's not good. Um, low elevation mosses likely carried by the ice man to the high mountains provide a clue. Um, so then they went and examined the distribution of five low elevation mosses found near the corpse. And the most frequent habitat for all these mosses is in the Schnallstall Valley. So again, he was probably hanging out in the valley, gathering these things um, for survival. Maybe, I don't know if he knew he was being pursued at that point. Maybe he got ambushed um, or got robbed or something. I don't know. But if he got robbed, I think they would have taken his stuff, but his stuff was still there. I don't know. Um, could be political or something. No idea. Uh, suggesting that Otzi could have been wandering as low as 600 uh, meters in the day before his death, the days before his death. So um, he was hanging out in the valley, then he goes up. That's basically the story that they have so far. While he was in the valley, he was collecting stuff, uh, mosses, um, mushrooms, or whatever it was. Um, they're still studying stuff from his pouch, his belt pouch. Um, but Dixon's uh, summation of the 200 samples taken from the site is they were they conducted a first uh, statistical analysis of all that stuff, um, and that's pretty much it. They 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 know for sure. Let me pull up the map here. This is the artistic rendition of him di dying, where he's crawling and his arm is across. Um, he has this grass cloak and leather on. Um, I don't know why he's not wearing pants. I feel like he would wear pants. Um, yeah, this is like a dramatic rendition of him. This is a recreation of him. I don't know how accurate this is, but um, there was enough left over of him because you know this is, he's a natural mummy. He looked pretty intact. Like his skin is still there. His, everything's intact there. Um, so yeah, maybe he was, uh, maybe he did look like this. And then again, the Alps are here. And then he's, they think he's from uh, central Italy. So who knows what was going on at the time? All we know is that it was a copper age. Um, maybe he belonged to a, a tribe or something. Who knows? Uh, let me know what you guys think about Otzi, the Iceman, about his, his journey, um, his, his, the circumstances of his murder. If you know anything about the Neolithic, Chocolithic, and the Bronze Age, that, that area, 3300 BC around there, please uh, leave some comments about that. Um, I think that, that that era is far more fascinating than I thought it would be. Um, th there was an article that I did, a video that I did on an article f a few months ago about um, uh, Ireland and their contribution to the Bronze Age, their, their mines that they had. I forget the name of the mine right now very famous mine it's huge um and then there was another one in england and again though all those that copper they, they were mining it like like it was some sort of mega corporation because they had a culture based on that mining system so day in and day out most of the population were they were mining and contributing gold bronze whatever it was they found from their mines and they were spreading it all across europe so I wonder um, what was what was this, the context of all that? What what politically, culturally, what were all the different kinds of like w how many different types of genetics were 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 uh, flowing in and out of the area? Um, does it have anything to do with Doggerland? Because Doggerland, they find much of this. They find tools. They find weapons. They find all kinds of stuff that's now under under the North Sea. Um, do they are were they part of this? Were they the genesis or or uh, a, a direct ancestor or precursor of this cultural mining, uh, uh, I guess, metallurgy type of uh, culture? What was They definitely weren't hunter-gatherers because they had weapons. And when people have weapons, they're usually protecting something, which is probably property. And if you have property, you're probably... You, you are a hunter. Maybe you could be hunting and gathering, but you're also living on the property. And so... You know, all, there are all these things to think about. And that goes far back because Doggerland is 12,000 plus uh, years ago. Uh, so anyway, let me know what you guys think. Um, I'll talk to you guys in a bit. I'll probably have another video this this weekend. I'm going to start uh, ramping up the rate of the video, especially in January when I start getting more time um, and getting the new studio set up. 
I'm also going to be uh, doing a podcast. I think I mentioned it uh, in a few a few episodes ago. It won't. It'll just be audio only. But I think it'll be a different format than this. Um, it'll be longer, probably like an hour or so. And uh, it'll be similar but different from this. Um, the only issue is that there won't be any uh, visuals. So I don't know. I have to work that out. Um, and I might have a guest come on in the future as well to, to discuss certain things. And I might go back on the Grime Erica as well. Um, there's a lot of stuff going on right now. Obviously, there's a lot going on with everybody at this time of year, especially if you have a, a big family. Um, so yeah, let me know what you guys think about this. I think it's fascinating. I think there's so much to learn from Otzi beyond, uh, just what we know now. Um, there's so many questions like what, this whole, the whole acupuncture thing is really fascinating to me. Uh, but anyway, let me know what you guys think and I'll talk to you guys later.